So we're gonna make some ghee today, which is rendered butter oil. So it's cooking off all the milk solids out of the um, butter, and it's just the pure butter oil. Started to do ghee this morning and realized, just start with a clean kitchen, you'll save yourself a world of trouble. So what you guys are gonna to wanna to do is, these are all the things you'll need. Glass jar for putting the finished product in. Pot that works on your stove, um, which I'm glad I tested because you are going to need to get a piece of cheesecloth and this one's folded over twice. So what you do is just measure out how it's going to sit on the pot. And I realized that if I put an elastic around this, it's not going to stay. It's just going to slip off the pot. So I had to change pots. Also too, because Normally I'm doing this on a gas cooker and at the moment we don't have our gas bottles hooked up, our propane bottles hooked up. So I'm going to have to do this one on an induction cooker. This is the first time I've ever done it on induction. You want to get a pot, no water inside. You don't want like any droplets of water um, because if you do, <laughs> butter oil spits everywhere all over your stove. So. We've got our pot. Today I think I'm going to do three bricks of butter and leave one out for eating because butter is our favorite health food in this house. And I mean that. Butter is a health food. Not margarine, not low salt, real butter. So really what you want is grass-fed butter. So these are cows that are out on pasture. Um, it is just so much better for you. So if you can source some grass-fed butter, you're winning. <laughs> now, this is not something that you just start making and walk away from, you know. Um, things like sauerkraut, you can do that. You can walk away, top up the water once a day. This, if you are not standing over your cooktop and you walk away, there is chance that you could start a fire because this oil, it's oil. It's highly flammable. <laughs> um, so you just want to be very mindful of that. This is not something that you can just set and forget. This is something that you've got to put a little bit of time and love into. And trust me, you'll taste it. You'll taste that time and love <laughs> when you're eating veggies like roasted or fried in this. It's delicious. We use ghee for cooking all of our fried greens, for cooking chips, like, you know, um, french fries. It is so good guys. It's like the best way I can describe the taste of ghee is it's like caramelized butter. Oh my god. Does it get much better than that? Caramelized butter flavor? Oh my god. So good. Almost $12 worth of butter in this pot. <laughs> so next we're going to go over to our makeshift cooktop. You just want to turn it on as low as it can go. You don't want this boiling away. You don't want it like on high. You want it the lowest setting you can get on your cooktop. Um, because really what you want to do is you want to simmer the... you really want it on like a gentle simmer. So you want to simmer the milk solids out really and the milk solids you'll see they'll fall to the bottom as it cooks and once the milk solids are just mostly all just caked to the bottom of the pot that's when you take your cheesecloth and you pour it into your jar so i'm going to get this cheesecloth the reason I use cheesecloth when it's on the cooktop, guys, is because if you have a lid on it, the water can't evaporate. And I know this from experience. 
and water can't evaporate so it just drips down into the pot and every time water drips down into the boiling oil it goes psh and spits everywhere like there was one time where I swear I must have just like wasted a brick of butter on the cooktop because it just splashed everywhere so don't use a lid um, use cheesecloth with a bit of elastic around it because um, the lid will hold the water in and it'll spit and go everywhere okay so what I've done is I've put the butter in the pot and I noticed that because the lowest this induction cooker can go is, oh no, it says 300. I, I don't know if that's Fahrenheit or what. Um, so that's higher than the normal boil simmer for us. So we're just going to see how this one goes. But what I did is I put the cheesecloth over top of the pot and I've just stuck an elastic around it. In other times, I just fold cheesecloth back into the elastic if there, especially if there's an open flame you don't want that cheesecloth coming anywhere near that open flame because it'll go up like matchstick um, so but because this is magnetic cooking induction um, it should be alright so already I can feel the steam just starting to come through here so what you want to do is you want to let that water evaporate out of the pot rather than being trapped inside with a lid on it. Um, so we'll see how long this one takes on induction, but this is something you kind of just put on the stove and you hang around the kitchen until it's done. And there's a fine line because I've burnt ghee before and it tasted eh, not good. And there's, it's, you'll know it, it's caramelized butter smell and you'll know okay it's done <laughs> and then I'll show you how to strain it off okay so that's basically what it looks like so you can see most of the milk solids have fallen to the bottom but there's still a thin layer on the top don't stress about that so I took the cheesecloth off and that looks like it's done take the cheesecloth that was on top of the pot, um, letting all the steam through, and we're just going to put it over the top of the jar. Now keep in mind guys, this is a heat resistant jar because this is used for canning. Um, so this jar can handle high temperatures. In the past we've been using um, old coconut oil jars. So these, they don't handle the heat as well. So a couple times, if you're using these, you've got to pour it in very slowly. Because if you pour the hot oil in all at once, the bottom will literally just crack off. And then you've just wasted all that time making ghee to have it fall out the bottom of the jar. And I only say this because I'm saying it from experience. <laughs> um, so no harsh critics here. So we've taken the cheesecloth that was on top of our pot. We are just going to lay it over top of our heat resistant jar. And we're just going to make like a little pouch in the middle. Just so that it can hang down a little bit. And this is what we are going to use to strain off any milk solids that are going to go through. Um, so the ones that didn't quite sink to the bottom of the pot, they're going to get caught in here. It's all good. So we take our delicious, oh yes it does, it smells like caramelized butter, it's divine. So we just just want to let that sit in there and you just want to do a little bit at a time. Again, if you don't have heat resistant jars, they can crack so you've got to do it like uber slow. And guys, like, keeping in mind, if you were to pay for a jar of ghee this big, 
you'd be looking at like 60 or 70 dollars for a jar of ghee this big um i've seen ones in organic whole food shops they're anywhere from like 25 dollars upwards easy like they're usually about 35 bucks 50 bucks but for a jar this big that's easily like 60 70 pushing $80 for grass-fed organic ghee and you just spent $12 buying grass-fed organic butter so for $12 in a little bit of time you can make your own cooking ghee um, so not only are you saving yourself you know a little bit of time but you're also saving a lot of money And then the next step after this is we just let it cool down and hurrah, we've got cooking ghee. And speaking of bounty, you know, if I'm making a thing, a pot of ghee, I'll often just make two of them. Like when we have our normal gas cooker, I'll just put, do a big pot of ghee. And I fill one of these for us and I give one to our mother and father-in-law. Like, you know, my mother-in-law gives us homemade sourdough bread and in return we give them ghee and tallow and baby time <laughs> it's all just about like that the heart of the community sharing resources sharing what you have whether it's knowledge or time or medicine or plants um or skills you know so I'm just going to finish this. And also, one thing to note, if you're doing it in a pot and you're just pouring it straight from the pot into the jar, really good idea to test the pouring of the pot before you actually put anything in it and cook it because I've done this in pots where they don't have a good lip on them and they end up spilling every time I like pour and stop and pour and stop. So. And looks like three bricks of butter was just the perfect amount. And I'll show you what the bottom of the pot looks like. So this is, I've gotten this one at the perfect time. So it was gently, it was kind of like boiling slash simmering a little above where I would normally have it. But like I said, I'm, you know, one of the benefits of being a farmer's wife is my husband comes home for lunch. So I just watched this as we had lunch and it was, wasn't really doing much. So I just turned the temperature up um, a couple of degrees. And again, the milk solids will go to the bottom. But this is where you get the caramelized butter taste, guys. So that's all the milk solids that have fallen to the bottom of the pot while it's been cooking. And that's actually what gives the ghee that really caramel um, butter flavor, like caramel butter. And if you guys have never cooked with ghee before, I highly recommend it. It is just gives everything a whole new flavor. So with that, I'm just going to scrape out the bottom of this pot. It's not cooked in there hard or long or burnt in there or anything. It's really easy to just scrape that out and throw it in the compost pile and... All those little um, bugs love it. So we've got our jar of ghee. The house smells like caramel butter and everybody loves that smell. And that, my darlings, is how you make ghee to cook with.